Um, brassicas, what we commonly call Brussels sprouts or kales or cabbages or cauliflowers, kohlrabis, um, all of these are actually the exact same genus species. They have the exact same genetic makeup, um, which means that, you know, you could end up in theory with your um, Brussels sprouts with kale leaves, which would be a really great um, thing to have in my garden. I wish somebody would grow that. But it also means that you can get things crossed in your garden and you won't be saving um, varieties from, say, a kale that you really like. So knowing that all of those are in the same species would be important. And then um, vegetables may have weedy relatives. And here where we are in Iowa in the summer, um, there's a very common plant that grows in ditches that will could po possibly ruin all of our carrot crops. Um, I don't know if anyone's starting to think what that is, but it is Queen Anne's lace. Um, Queen Anne's lace will cross-pollinate with all carrots. Other varieties of weedy relatives that we have are chicory, um, there are parsnips, wild parsnips or cow parsnips that might cross with any um, cultivated parsnips that are out there. Um, but check your area too because you might have different, depending on where you are in the country, you might have different weedy relatives that you have to be concerned about as well. All right, so that was kind of the easy part because again, like I said, all you have to do is check the back of your seed packet. Um, and now we get to this uh, diagram of a, a plant uh, flower that you probably haven't seen again since high school biology. Um, and the whole reason I have this on here is just to make sure we all know what we're talking about when I use some of this language. Um, you have to know how your plants pollinate, and pollination is just the process of getting pollen from the male parts to the female parts in the plant. Um, and it's not until this happens that the plant can be fertilized and, and the seed can be produced. Um, so we have the anther and the filament, which makes up the male parts, also known as the stamen, and we have the stigma and the style, which are the female parts, also known collectively as the pistil. And so the whole point of what I'm talking about here is controlling that process of getting the pollen to the stigma so that it can pollinate. And with some plants, this is way easier, um, and with some others, it can be a little more complicated. And some plants really help you when it comes to seed saving. And those are selfers. These are plants that are capable of fertilization through self-pollination. Basically, they do it all themselves. Um, and so this flower up here is a cow pea. And these selfers have perfect flowers with both male and female parts. And then there are outcrossers. And these are plants that kind of, by their nature, have to cross-pollinate a bit more. These are um, plants that have female flowers and male, male flowers, or, or they often have male plants and female plants, and we'll talk about those too as we go for, forward. So back to the selfers, the easier start to place to begin. Um, if you're a new seed saver, I would recommend starting with a selfer. Um, they just make it a lot easier for you. They might include the Fabaceae family, which we'll talk about here, um, tomatoes, lettuce, beans, all of those are selfers. So if you look at this flower here, on the left, you can see the standard petal, the wing petal, and then this thing called the keel, which is kind of this petal that's tucked up and covers the male and the female parts. So if you were a bee and you were trying to get in there to spread some pollen around, it'd be pretty hard for you to get under that keel. In this photo, you can see the keel's been pulled down, the male and female parts are exposed. Um, and, and that, if, if the flower were like that, it would be much easier for it to cross-pollinate. But since it has that keel tucked under there, um, it really protects the plants from uh, cross-pollination. And, you know, you can go out into your garden and, and pull apart some flowers and look at them to see what parts there are and um, how they're structured in such a way that may or may not make them more likely to cross-pollinate. Another example of a selfer is the tomato. So again, a tomato is a great way to get started if you're new at seed saving because they don't cross-pollinate much. Um, so in these parts, you can see the, the petals. And then the anthers, which are that male part that has the pollen, are actually fused around the stigma or the female part. So for 
bees and, and other insects, this makes it really hard to cross-pollinate because the anthers are fused around that stigma. Um, now you can see the arrow that's pointed at that stigma where the, piss, the, um, the anthers have been partially removed. So now you can see it's exposed, but it wasn't like that until we pulled away the, the anthers. And again, you can go out into your garden and observe these things by pulling apart flowers. Another thing you can look for um, is there are some tomato varieties that are more likely to cross-pollinate than others. What you see in this picture here are two tomato blossoms, and the one on the left has an exerted stigma, which means the stigma extends past those fused anthers. Um, and you know, you can picture this. You can picture the bee going and visiting the flowers and, and moving some of that pollen around. And it's more likely to happen on those varieties with an exerted stigma. The one on the right is enclosed, um, and it would be very hard for a bee or an insect to move around that pollen. Um, and then this should be big, bright letters flashing, warning, 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 self-pollinating does not imply an inability to be cross-pollinated. And this picture here is a picture of a pepper plant with a bee that is most likely cross-pollinating um, that pepper. So look in your garden, figure out if maybe you're um, seeing a lot of pollinators or things like that, and you might have more of an issue with cross-pollination. Um, there is always that percentage chance that things can cross-pollinate, even if they are self-pollinating. So now we move on to the outcrossers, um, and the first group of outcrossers that I'm going to talk about are monaceous outcrossers. And monaceous is a word in Latin that means one house, and it means that there are both male and female flowers on the same plant, but they're not all the same flower. So this is an example of the cucurbit cucurbits here, um, and this is a female flower, and you can actually see that it's a female flower because it has an ovary um, at the base of the flower, or, or an immature fruit that will, once fertilized, turn into that matured squash. There's um, another picture of that. And then here's a male flower. And you can see at the base here that there's no ovary, there's no immature fruit there. And again, being, being a seed saver is going out into your garden and, and being observant, looking at the different flower structures, um, looking for male or female flowers, or, or looking to see um, what the structure of the plants are. It's kind of a good way to get to know your garden. Um, and then again, this is a picture of the male flower um, looking down at the cucurbit flowers, the males on the left, the females on the right. A lot harder to tell this way than, with, um, than looking at the base of the flower. All right, another example of a monaceous outcrosser is corn, um, and it has both the male and female flowers on the same plant. The tassels are the male flowers, and they'll shed their pollen. You can see that the pollen's starting to be ready on this plant onto the silks below, or the female flowers. Um, you can imagine growing corn without having to um, isolate it in some way is pretty difficult here in Iowa, and you would be completely right about that. Um, so there are different things that we do in order to make sure that our varieties don't cross-pollinate with field corn or, or cr corns that are growing nearby. Yeah, corn pollen can travel a long way in the wind, up to two miles by some accounts. And moving on to a different category of outcrossers, these are dioecious outcrossers. Um, and dioecious means two houses or um, a male plant and a female plant. And a really good example of this is spinach. You can see the male spinach plant in the foreground and the female spinach plant in the background there. Um, and you just have to make sure that you have both of these plants in your garden so that you can um, have your seed pollinated and then fertilized. Um, they are also called obligate outcrossers because by nature they have to outcross. They can't pollinate the same plant. Um, whereas in the theory, that squash plant will have both male and female flowers on the same plant, it could pollinate itself. But these dioecious ones are obligate outcrossers because they have to cross-pollinate. 